Hello and welcome to the de Havilland Aircraft Museum. What we have here are two models, a one-to-one -one scale model of a Comet Racer and a one-fifth scale model of a DH-77, the subject of this video. We're grateful to the chap who built this model and donated it to the museum. It's a really impressive piece and represents an interesting phase in aircraft design at de Havilland. The DH-77 is interesting as it represents a turning point in military aviation. It was built at a time when air defence tactics were moving from being based on fighter patrols looking for enemy aircraft to planes which could quickly climb and fly to intercept incoming bombers that had been detected by listening stations. By the time of the Battle of Britain, 14 years later, this approach was vindicated, not least because of the invention of radar detection. So what did that mean for aircraft? Firstly, the range of fighters could be less but they needed to be fast enough to reach the necessary height and to be manoeuvrable to dogfight with the enemy. The British government issued a specification for a new fighter. At the time, de Havilland had plenty of work building civilian aircraft such as the Moth Trainer and the Dragon Airliner. So they collaborated with Gloucester Aircraft and Napier Engines to build the DH-77 prototype. Let's have a look at the plane. The engine designed by Frank Halford, a pioneering aircraft engine designer, not only for de Havilland but also for Napier, where he designed this engine, the Napier Rapier air-cooled H engine. Unfortunately, we do not have examples of this particular engine, but the museum has other engines he designed, including the famous Gypsy series used in the Moth and Tiger Moth, and his pioneering jet engines like the Goblin and Ghost. The DH-77 fuselage was made of wood, covered with plywood, similar to the DH-71 high-speed research plane built a couple of years earlier. You can get a good idea how this plane was designed from the replica DH-71 that the museum is currently working on. Do have a look when you come to visit. A radical thing about this aircraft is that it is a monoplane, rather than a biplane, as most fighters of this era were. In the late 1920s, biplanes were nearing the height of their development. Monoplanes like the BF-109, Hurricane and Spitfire were a few years away. De Havilland took the decision to offer a monoplane to the RAF in 1929. So why isn't this fighter better known? This was an impressive design for its day, a top speed of 200 miles an hour with twin machine guns. Of course, within 10 years there would be fighters capable of 350 miles per hour with eight machine guns. In 1929, the DH-77 was evaluated alongside prototypes from other manufacturers. At the end, the beautiful Hawker Fury was the only plane selected for production and service. In test, the DH-77 was on par with the Fury in terms of performance, even though it had a far less powerful engine. So this aircraft represents a what might have been, and was consigned to history with only the prototype being built. The prototype was not a complete loss though. After the Rapier, Frank Halford designed the Napier Sabre, another H engine which powered the famous Hawker Typhoon and Tempest during the latter part of World War II. And de Havilland also built on their knowledge, and went on to build the DH-88 Comet Racer, which led in turn to the idea of a high-speed bomber, the famous DH-98 Mosquito. So although this plane never entered production, it is a great example of pioneering work from de Havilland. And you can see many other examples of de Havilland's pioneering at the museum.